Welcome back. We're discussing IS and its relationship with Islam. I'm joined by Stephen Suleiman Schwartz, the Executive Director of the Center for Islamic Pluralism here in Washington, D.C. He joins us from San Francisco. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for the invitation. When we look at the teachings of Islam and the manner in which Islamic uh, State is conducting this military campaign in Iraq, are we using religion as a cover here for what are essentially political aims? Yes, I would say that they are. Uh, using religious uh, doctrines as a cover for political aims. It's an ideological movement that uh, does not uh, adhere to conventional Islam. On the other hand, there is a problem, and the problem is that given the uh, refusal of anybody else in the world to intervene in the uh, situation in Syria where the dictatorship massacred 200,000 people, this left a void that was filled by extreme jihadists like the so-called Islamic State. And this particular brand of Islam that they're espousing, does it have much support in the Muslim world? The form of uh, radical Islam that is so-called Islamic State, which is extreme Wahhabism, is a minority tendency in Islam. There's no question about it. It exists in uh, Saudi Arabia in a somewhat uh, now here. But no, it's a minority in Islam. But the problem is that in Islamic history, this kind of extremism has erupted uh, several times through Islamic history, as extremism has erupted in basically all... And a form of Islam, Wahhabism, that you've mentioned, what distinguishes it from, say, mainstream teachings? Well, mainstream teaching in Islam has never been, uh, shall we say, fanatical about hunting for heresy, searching out so-called apostates, and Islam has always been a political motivation behind it. But Wahhabism stands out over its last 250 years for its financing that anybody that doesn't agree with the doctrines of Wahhabism uh, is an apostate, is no longer a Muslim. You have to be a Wahhabi. Now, in this particular instance, we have Islamic State, or ISIS as they're sometimes called, wanting to establish what they call an Islamic State, a caliphate. What makes this different from, say, other Muslim states in, in that particular region? Well, there's been no caliphate in Islam since 1924, and the rules for a caliphate are quite well established in Islam. A caliphate has to be uh, something that the majority of the Muslims agree on. Historically, the caliphates have been located in the strongest, most powerful Muslim states. Uh, you know, you have the same problem with the uh, Islamic State, so-called Islamic State, that you had with bin Laden and, uh, and al-Qaeda. Uh, jihad, uh, the caliphate, all of these concepts. It's not a matter of somebody standing up in the middle of nowhere and saying, we're going to have a new caliphate or we're going to launch jihad. The, these, uh, the fact that a group of basically ragtag bandits, terrorists, marginal types have declined, de decided to declare a, a caliphate, when you compare it with the caliphates of the past, it's an absurdity. This is a caliphate in the middle of nowhere, so-called caliphate in the middle of nowhere, it has no authority. It has no support. It's basically a form of political and ideological adventurism. And have they exploited the divisions between the two main branches of Islam, Shia uh, Islam and, and Sunni Islam? Oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, Wahhabism has always hated the Shias, has always attacked the Shias, uh, has always despoiled and uh, uh, plundered the Shias. And this form of Wahhabism is especially violent against the Shias because they see themselves as locked in a struggle with Iran and with the uh, Shia authority in Iraq, the fact that Iran supports the dictatorship in Syria. These things are the are issues that the so-called Islamic State draws on in its campaign. And, you know, you've called them a ragtag uh, bandits, but what kind of a threat do they pose to, say, more moderate states, uh, for example, Jordan? Well, they pose a threat to all of the surrounding states to the extent that they're not defeated, to the extent that they're not resisted. Uh, I'm, not I'm not certain that they pose a, uh, an immediate threat to Jordan or Saudi Arabia or Kuwait, but it's clear that those area states that have been undermined by Sunni-Shia conflict, like uh, uh, um, Syria, Iraq, possibly Turkey, are in great uh, danger from, from the so-called Islamic State. All right, we have a few seconds left. What do we know about the leader of this group, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi? 
Well, all we know is that he has a past as a leader of the so-called al-Qaeda in Iraq, which uh, attacked the American forces in the Iraqi state after the U.S. intervention in 2003. And otherwise, he's not a distinguished figure in Islamic theology or Islamic doctrine. He really has no history. That's a really tag by adventurers. Who are these people? They're nobody. It, I mean, the caliphates of the past were led by important uh, Islamic figures, not by people who stood up in the middle of nowhere and said, I'm the new caliph. Stephen Suleiman Schwartz, thank you for joining us, sir.